SpaceX Starlink direct to sell is here. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. Look at that cup. Do you love Jack? Tell me you love Jack. I love Jack. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking about something that a lot of you guys have been asking me about for the last two, three months. When are we going to be able to make phone calls? When are we going to be able to use our cell phone with our SpaceX Starlink? How can we do it? When can we do it? When is it going to happen? I did a video not too long ago about how things just got pushed back. Like what the hell happened? I did a video about the, let's say the merging, not really a merging, but a partnership between T-Mobile and SpaceX Starlink and how they were going to be doing some backhauling between each other, yada, yada, yada. The bottom line here was Elon Musk. SpaceX Starlink is was going to work with T-Mobile and T-Mobile customers. And then you would be able to make phone calls with a satellite instead of making a phone call through a tower. This was going to just broaden the scope of where you actually have connectivity where you do not need a Starlink uplink, let's say your antenna, you can actually just simply use a phone and that is it. That was something that is amazing. Now there's other companies working on it right now. Well, T-Mobile and Starlink was getting together. They did this partnership. It was like six, eight months ago and then nothing transpired. It just, everything went silent. So I did a video. I'm like, what the hell happened here? Like, I don't even get it. It was supposed to happen. It never happened. What is the story? Well, as of today, if you look on Starlink's website, there is a new tab. You have a business tab, you have your personal tab. If you go into business and you look all the way over to the right hand side, you're going to see something that is called direct to sell. It's here or almost here. So what I want to do today is I just want to go through it with you because this is new information. And I think that a lot of you that have been asking me about it, at least now we're going to have some guidance. What is it? When is it coming? When are we going to be able to use it? And all the rest of this stuff. What is the technology behind it? And that's what we're going to go through today. I think it's fascinating. I hope you guys do too. And we're going to dig in a little bit deeper, but first we're going to go over to the website, read through it. So you know exactly what this is according to SpaceX. So anyways, let's jump over to my screen and check this out. So if you go to Starlink.com and then on the screen, you will see residential Rome boats. I don't know what happened to aviation. I think they moved that into business. Anyways, this is the personal area. If you click on business up, oh, there it is. There's aviation, maritime, land mobility, as well as fixed sites. But all the way to the right, you can see it says direct to sell. This is brand new. This was not here before. Let's go ahead and click on this and see what SpaceX Starlink has to say. So it says Starlink direct to sell seamless access to text, voice and data for LTE phones across the globe. Ubiquitous coverage. Starlink satellites with direct to sell capabilities enable ubiquitous access to texting, calling and browsing wherever you may be on land, lakes or coastal waters. Direct to sell will also connect IOT or Internet of Things devices with common LTE standards. Now, keep this in mind what they're saying here. Land, lakes or coastal waters. That's a very interesting comment. What that means is you'll be able to use it on land, but you're not going to be able to use it at sea. So they are making this distinction between the two. So if I'm in the middle of Florida, for example, and I'm on Lake Okeechobee and I'm fishing, well, I can use it there. Also holds true if I'm fishing, for example, on a pier on the coast line someplace. I can also use it there as well as anywhere on land. But if I'm on a boat, I cannot use it. That is not the location that it will work. So this is the way they're kind of, I guess, segregating the coverage and saying that if you want this coverage, most likely they'll be able to give it to you, but maybe there'll be a maritime version of this cell to satellite coverage, let's call it. Anyways, let's get back over to the site. It says text will be starting in 2024, voice and data available starting in 2025, and IoT, which is Internet of Things, starting in 
in 2025 also. If we move down, it says stay connected. Direct to sell works with existing LTE phones wherever you can see the sky. No changes to hardware, firmware, or special apps are required, providing seamless access to text, voice, and data. A cell phone tower in space. It says Starlink satellite with direct to sell capabilities have an advanced E Node B modem on board that acts like a cell tower in space, allowing network integration similar to a standard roaming partner. Eliminate dead zones. Direct to sell enables connectivity in remote regions, providing peace of mind when customers need it most. Engineered by SpaceX, SpaceX is leveraging its experience in manufacturing and launching the world's most advanced rockets and spacecraft to deploy Starlink satellites with the direct-to-sell capability at scale. Direct-to-sell satellites will initially be launched on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and then Starship. On orbit, satellites will immediately connect over laser backhaul to Starlink Constellation to provide global connectivity. Global Partners Cellular providers using direct-to-sell have access to reciprocal global access in all partner nations. T-Mobile US, Rogers Canada, KDDI in Japan, Optus in Australia, 1NZ in New Zealand, and SALT in Switzerland. So this is really interesting stuff. I saw this image that they showed on how this worked. And on the right hand side, you can see it says unmodified cell phone. And then it goes up to a satellite. And then you can see it goes satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite. And then it bounces back down to the Starlink ground network. That could be a ground station or maybe later on in time, the point of presence that actually has ground stations right there at the point of presence at the pop, which is directly connected to the internet backbone, and then it follows into the partner operating network. So that could be T-Mobile's network, for example, or another carrier, and then it sends the data through fiber to the cell towers. These cell towers now have access, once again, to your text, to your calls, to any data. So you can do anything that you want to do using either the cell tower or using the unmodified cell phone connecting to a satellite, which is amazing. Once again, what they're saying here is, is you need to be out in the open. And that was one of the things that we went back and forth with months ago. I'm like, so how are they gonna use this? How are we gonna connect this, right? Indoors to a satellite. It's not gonna happen, guys. I said it over and over and people are like, oh, maybe it's more powerful, this and that. I'm like, there's no way. The damn thing doesn't even work with a dish this big when it's raining. <laughs> anyway, so yes, what they're saying is, is you need to be out in the open. Now, what they also said is they were connecting to these E-node Bs is what they're calling it. I'm like, what the hell is an E-node B? I don't know. So I did some research. I figured if I'm curious, maybe you would be too. So I looked this up and this is what it said. An E-node B or an evolved node B is not a modem in a traditional sense, but rather a critical component of the long-term evolution or LTE wireless network. The E-node B serves as a base station in LTE technology and plays a fundamental role in facilitating wireless communication between user devices such as smartphones, tablets, modems, or IOTs, or Internet of Things devices, and the LTE network. It's like that midpoint, right? It is that communication layer let's call it. While E-Node B are essentially components of LTE network, it's important to note that the term modem typically refers to a device that connects a user's equipment, like a computer or a router, to an internet service provider's network, your ISP. In the context of LTE, a user device, such as a smartphone or a mobile hotspot, may have an LTE modem integrated to establish a wireless connection already ready with the Eno B. So your modem or your modem here, your modem inside your phone already is there that allows the connection between this and the satellite that has that E-Node B built into it. It finalizes by saying the E-Node B is responsible for managing and routing data within the LTE network itself. So basically what it's doing is all of the routing, all of the handshaking, 
Think of it as something like this. If you are driving with your phone and you're getting out of, let's say, distance of one tower and you're moving into another tower, that is what's doing that handshake between tower to tower so you do not lose connectivity. It's doing all of that data stuff that's in the back end of keeping the connection going, let's say, all right? It's facilitating that connection between your modem that's inside your phone and your tower now, your cell tower that's in low earth orbit. That's basically what's going on here. These satellites, which I would have to guess, the version 2.0 minis have these Enode Bs already built into them. They really weren't discussed, but they did talk about having the ability to do this direct cell connectivity back when they didn't even have the version two minis out yet. But then we started seeing the version two minis out there and they had additional functionality. And now we're seeing the new satellites, the version two minis, having not only just this additional functionality, which are those Enode Bs, to be able to do this direct to cell connectivity, but now they have advanced lasers too, to form that extremely fast mesh network around the entire planet. Basically taking your data and bouncing it from satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite, to satellite not having to go ground at all until the very last moment. So instead of having all of these ground stations all over the place, bouncing the stuff up and down, up and down, you can basically get the data and then send it around the world if you want via satellite at the speed of light. All right. And when it gets to the other side of the world, use that satellite to beam it down to the ground station and then back over to you, basically back up and down. So this really takes a lot of the, let's say, work out of it. It just condenses stuff so that you can actually see better speeds. There's going to be faster speeds, better reliability, and we're going to also see lower latency coming up very soon. There's a lot of people that have been talking to me in the comments as well as the community page. If you haven't seen the community page, go check it out. There's a lot of great smart people on that community page. Anyways, they've been telling me that their speeds are getting faster. There is a greater majority of people as of today telling me that their speeds are getting better better than before when a lot of people were saying that their speeds were getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So this is a good thing. What this means to me is these version two minis are doing what they supposed to do and they're doing it really, really well. I think they're actually doing it better than what Elon expected them to do. And the reason being is in that last video that I did where he kind of, I don't know if he flubbed or if he put out the information early or whatever, but he ended up calling the next next generation satellites that are going into orbit in 2024 version threes and not version twos, maxis, right? The full size version twos. He called them version threes. Was that a slip up? Are they version threes? What is going on? We know that technology is just exponential, right? It's just Moore's law. That's just the way it is. Okay. So what's happening most likely is they weren't able to get these maxis, as I call them, the big version twos into space because Starship has not actually worked. But since that is the case, I think the technology has been ramping up in such a degree that the version two is probably almost outdated already. And they need a version three that has maybe even stronger of these E-Node Bs built on board in comparison to the E-Node Bs that are currently on board of the version two minis that are currently up there. So I think that the technology is already there. I think that SpaceX is already testing this texting back and forth with no problem. I bet they're also testing calling and probably the calling is working. But remember, as you migrate from text into calls and then finally into video, the amount of connectivity doubles and triples and quadruples, right? A text is very, very small, just bits of data. When you start making a phone call, even if you compress the voice, it is still a good amount of data that needs to be transacted between your phone and the satellite. And then eventually, once we are able to surf the web and maybe do video conference calls and whatnot, being outside just with your phone, using an uplink to a satellite, 
that is gonna be a ton of data, and that amount of data will only be viable, let's say, available when we see a stronger system, let's say, maybe a better E-Node B that's up there on these satellites, or whatever they're using. It's going to have to be pretty strong because it's going to have to be able to deal with a lot of data. They're gonna be able to transact the data quickly. They're gonna be able to disseminate this data between satellite to satellite to satellite using this high-speed lasers, that's fine but still the amount of data that they are pushing down to earth from those satellites is going to be a lot once we move into the let's say video conferencing stage and browsing the web stage and once again that's why they are predicting 2025 for that so that's why we're seeing texting in 2024 in 2025 we're going to see voice and data and then finally in 2025 we're going to see IOT which is your internet of things devices connected so anyways, I hope you found this very interesting. I know I did. I want to know what you think. Is this something that you'd be interested in? Would you like to be able to make a phone call anywhere on the planet as long as you're outside from your phone? I know I would. Do you know how much it was to be able to have a satellite phone? back in the day, you would pay thousands and thousands of dollars to have a satellite phone, to be able to have that uplink, as they call it, a satellite uplink. It's just amazing, just boom. <laughs> just absolutely amazing that you'll be able to do it with this and according to what they say no firmware update no update to the phone no app no nothing they'll just be able to use what you have already that's just incredible to me anyways if you enjoyed this content throw it a thumbs up that would be awesome don't forget to grab any of my ebooks over at jchristina.com forward slash books they are free if you haven't subscribed consider doing so if you are subscribed click this little button over here so when i go live or when a new video comes out you'll be notified of it immediately if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work there's a thank you button you can give a dollar or two if you want if not that's fine consider becoming a member of the channel that would be even better much better actually <laughs> If you want more Starlink content, I'll put a little link over here. There's about uh, 200 videos I've made so far out of the thousand on this channel specific to Starlink. Go check them out. There is a ton of good information, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, when to buy it, why to buy it. All this kind of stuff, go check those out when you're done watching this video. And if you're looking for a VPN, consider Pure VPN. The fine folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. Also, you can use a link, which is jchristina.com forward slash VPN, and you're gonna get 15% off anything that you purchase over there at Pure VPN. Not only can you get a VPN, but you can also get a static IP address, like what I use for my server over there, as well as do port forwarding. This is all stuff that you can't do with networks like Starlink. So this works out great. It ends up being like a dollar or two a month. It is definitely worth it. Once again, go check them out. jchristina.com forward slash VPN. And lastly, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.